Hi children, a warm welcome to all of you. We'll continue with our chapter 1 present topic as sublimation. We have seen that how can we change the state of matter by changing the temperature. The a small topic is there known as sublimation. Now we can see what is sublimation. Okay, for that there is an activity in your textbook page number 8. Activity 1.13 and figure 1.7 that is also very important. Figure drawing figure is must the and you have to study that activity 1.13. Now we can see what is that sublimation. Okay, moving on to our topic sublimation. For that we have taken a china dish. Okay, china dish, in that china dish we have taken either camphor or ammonium chloride. After crushing this camphor or ammonium chloride, we can take it in that china dish. And then keep the china dish on a tripod stand under the, over the burner. Okay, burner should be the and keep just a on the tripod stand. And then and keep an inverted funnel there just on the uh, china dish in which that ammonium chloride or camphor is taken. There. We have taken here ammonium chloride. Ammonium chloride or any other material we can take. Another material is camphor. We can take that camphor also, naphthalene is also there and then iodine is there. All these are sublimable material. Okay. So, here we have taken ammonium chloride or camphor, crushing it and taking it in the china dish. And a funnel is invertedly, invertedly kept in that china dish there. And that funnel, that stem of the funnel is covered with a cotton plug. The stem of the funnel is covered with a cotton plug there and then we started heating. We have started heating this apparatus, uh, experimental setup. At that time what, what is happening there? We have taken the solid ammonium chloride or crushed camphor pieces and after taking that we have started heating that material. So what will happen to this? When we are heating, we can observe that without going into the liquid state, the solid ammonium chloride or camphor material will directly go into the vapor phase and start depositing on this uh, sides of the funnel on cooling. Okay, initially we could observe only some vapors are moving up, but that vapors cannot escape out as the stem of the funnel is closed. So, uh, that vapors will be trapped inside the setup there and after complete conversion of ammonium chloride, that solid is completely disappeared, we will stop that heating process. After some time, if we are keeping it some time there, it will cool. So, during that time, this vapors are cooled to, uh, uh, vapors are condensed to directly to the solid state and will get deposited on the sides of this uh, funnel. It will not come into the liquid state. We cannot observe any uh, droplets of any liquid material there. Only first initially we are seeing that from the solid vapors are going and on cooling that vapors will be uh, deposited there on the sides of the uh, funnel as a solid material. So, from this we can tell that sublimation is the process of conversion of a solid material to directly to gas without going into the liquid state. A solid material if it is changing to gaseous state without going into the second state that is liquid state that conversion is known as sublimation. Right? Once again I am telling that conversion of solid to gas when the solid is directly changing to gas that is known as 
sublimation. Okay, the reverse process is also known as sublimation. Both the process are again known as sublimation. Gas is the conversion of gas directly to solid and solid to gas. That vice versa process together we are calling it as the sublimation. So, that activity is very important. You should go through the textbook activity. So, that is the definition for sublimation. When a solid is directly changing into gaseous state by absorbing energy without going into the liquid state. And that materials which can sublime, that those materials are known as sublimable materials and the examples for the sublimable materials are camphor. Camphor, this ammonium chloride is another example. Then naphthalene is the naphthalene. Do you know what is naphthalene? No, you might have seen that a white ball which is used for repelling the moth in between the cloth pieces in the almara and all. Your mother might have kept that uh, moth repelling that balls the. Yes? Yes. That balls are actually naphthalene balls. Okay. So, naphthalene, camphor, then iodine. Iodine is also a sublimable material. Okay. Now, we can move to next one. How can we change the state of matter by changing the pressure? We have already seen by changing the temperature, we are able to the change the state of matter particles. Okay. Now, on moving to next one, how can we change the pressure for changing uh, by, by changing the pressure, how can we change the state of matter by changing pressure? I have already told you that by changing pressure means it can be increase in pressure or it can be a decrease in pressure. Both the way how does it affect that change of state. Okay. So, before telling that we should know what is pressure. Pressure is force exerting per unit area. Unit area how much force is exerted that is actually known as pressure. And what is the SI unit of pressure? It is Newton per meter square. Area is meter square and force is Newton. So, Newton per meter square is the SI unit of pressure. Or otherwise it is also known as Pascal. Okay. And the atmosphere normally other unit also is the for the pressure. You know that for measuring the length there are different scales are there such as uh, temperature uh, for uh, centimeter scale, meter scale, kilometer, isn't it? Same way pressure also can be measured in different scales. Uh, units are the Newton per meter square, Pascal and also atmosphere is also another unit for the uh, measuring the pressure. A, we will write it as ATM, atmosphere. Okay, so atmosphere is another unit of measuring pressure. And we have seen that gases exerts pressure. Why? That also we have seen that, isn't it? And now we can see the pressure of air in atmosphere is called atmospheric pressure. In the atmosphere, air is there and that air is exerting a pressure. That pressure is known as atmospheric pressure. And that at sea level, that pressure exerted by the air is known as normal atmospheric pressure. Sea level, uh, a what pressure air exerts and that pressure is known as, taken as normal atmospheric pressure. Okay. Now we can see how, how does the change of pressure affect the change of state of matter. Okay, for that we can take that any, visualize any examples the, we can take some gases such as uh, petroleum gas or oxygen, we can apply pressure the. 
if we are applying pressure what is happening the the particles in the gaseous state particles are far apart from each other isn't it one is here then the other particle will be uh, far apart from that first particle isn't it so lot of spaces there in between the particles so when we are applying pressure these particles are coming close to each other when they come close to each other they start experiencing more forces of attraction between them and as the force of attraction increases they will start changing the state to that liquid gases when we apply pressure gases will be converted into liquid state so if you are increasing the pressure gas will change into liquid again in the case of liquids even again if you are compressing it what will happen the liquids will be converted into solids for example again if you are applying pressure the that the liquid particles again will come in close each other so that more and more force of attraction will be the which shows that uh, particles are very close to each other that means it is changing the state from liquid to solid so by increasing if you are increasing pressure if you are increasing pressure solid if you are increasing the pressure what is happening first we can see that gaseous state okay if you are increasing the pressure what is happening we can see that in the case of ga gases first so gas will be changing into liquids if you are increasing pressure and liquid will be converting into solid again if you are increasing pressure so by increasing the pressure gases will be converted into liquid liquid will be converted into solids and if you are decreasing the pressure what will happen if we are decreasing the pressure if we are decreasing pressure that solid will be if you are decreasing the pressure solids will be converted into liquid state and liquids will be converted into gaseous state so this will be happening if you are increasing pressure gas to liquid liquid to solid and if you are decreasing the pressure solid to liquid and liquid to gas so gases can be easily liquefied how can we liquefy the gases we can liquefy the gases by applying pressure by increasing pressure and temperature decreasing the temperature if you are decreasing the temperature and increasing the pressure we can easily liquefy the gases for example hydrogen nitrogen oxygen all these gases can be liquefied at high pressure ammonia we can liquefy at normal room temperature okay high pressure and low temperature all these gases can be liquefied and ammonia can be liquefied at room temperature okay now can you uh, have you seen that uh, carbon dioxide in any other form normally what is the form of carbon dioxide yes you said it is correct it is gaseous state so normally we have observed that carbon dioxide in gas gaseous state carbon dioxide is a gas but that carbon dioxide is a sublimable material just now we have seen what is sublimation that means if we are applying pressure if we are increasing the pressure of carbon dioxide on carbon dioxide if we are applying pressure we can convert that uh, uh, carbon dioxide gas directly into the solid carbon dioxide once again carbon dioxide is in the gaseous state and if you are applying pressure and lowering the temperature definitely we can convert that carbon dioxide gas into uh, solid carbon dioxide without going into the liquid state 
So, it is a sublimable material and uh, without changing into liquid state that gas is converting into solid. And the solid carbon dioxide is known as dry ice. Solid carbon dioxide is known as dry ice. Okay. It should be stored under high pressure because only by the application of pressure we can make that solid carbon dioxide. So, under high pressure only we can store it. Otherwise, we cannot store it. And that is why and uh, uh, it is known as solid carbon dioxide and it is known as dry ice. Okay. So, we have seen how can we change the states of matter by changing the pressure. Okay. Now, we can see a flow diagram to show the interconversion of states of matter. Okay. Interconversion of states of matter. So, I will draw it like this, solids, liquids and then gases. Okay, so solids can be converted into liquids. So, when a solid is changing to liquid, what does it call? That is, yes, it is fusion. Change of solid to liquid is fusion. One more term is the, that is melting. Okay, conversion of solid to liquid, fusion of melting. Okay, then change of liquid to gas. Yes, you said it is correct. It is boiling or vaporization or vaporization. Okay, then we have seen the conversion of solid gas to solid. What we call it as change of gases to solid? Yes, you said it is correct. It is sublimation. Sublimation. Okay. Now the reverse also we have seen by changing temperature or by changing pressure, whatever it is, we can change the states of matter, we can interconvert the states of matter. The reverse chain that is liquid to solid, what we call that liquid to solid? Yes, it is solidification. It is solidification. Okay, then gases to liquids, that is known as condensation that you have studied in smaller classes. Condensation. Okay, then the reverse process, solid conversion of solid to gas, that is also known as sublimation. So, these are the interconversion of states of matter. They have different terms for the conversion of each state to another state. There is a, it is a mentioned using particular terms. So, you should be very careful for those uh, terms and all. You have to go through that. It is given there in textbook page number 8, figure 1.9. Okay. And in textbook page number 8, uh, there is an activity to show the compressibility of gases, solids and liquids uh, and on application of pressure and all. There is an activity and figure is given the 1.8. Just go through that. Okay. So, I hope that change of states is clear to you. There are two conditions by changing the temperature and changing pressure also we can change the states. 
by increasing the temperature solids to liquid, liquid to gas. By decreasing the temperature gas to liquid, liquid to solid. By increasing the pressure gas to liquid, liquid to solid and by decreasing the pressure solid to liquid and liquid to gas. Okay, this much is clear to you. Thank you children.